so many smart plays that have to be made, right? Right, right. And like you said, it's nice. I don't want to say too much about that just so oh, all our viewers can go home, go over and like watch it themselves. But that was one of the most intense matches we had last night. And there's no Mega Man on that screen, Korean. Wait, did did, oh, did Mega? Oh, this is okay, okay. I was gonna say, man, Mega Man gained some like weight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he Mega Man, you you skipping out on the the gym days, bro? Like, I thought I thought we were facial hair with it. <laughs> yeah, man, I thought I thought we were staying consistent with that, man. I, last time we talked, like like at least three times a week. Well, that's another conversation you're gonna have have to have with your boy Mega Man. <laughs> We'll see if uh, Kamehameha actually sticks with it. Uh, I'm assuming so if he's like warming the character up in the button check, right? But, I mean, Wario, a character that it was very relevant at uh, EVO. Uh, 2017? Well, no, 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 like oh, the okay. recent EVO. EVO oh, okay. 2019. 2019. The, the most recent EVO, of course, EVO 2019. Um, a lot of Japan actually brought out Wario. And oh, I, yeah, yeah. I was talking with Abadongo at the tournament, and Japan just really feels like... Uh, Wario is just generally strong, but Wario is especially strong in a best of three format, which is why a lot of Japanese players went in to Evo with Wario. Um, but like he, he's just a relatively like relevant. He's very relevant in the meta. I know there's a lot of players, like top players, that some of them think meh, Wario's like not that great, and then other players think very very highly of Wario. Uh, it, it's just really it's really tough because it's we're talking about a character. That stand alone is very, very solid. But, like, you can get walk kills at 40%. I mean, and we saw that consistently throughout this tournament. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw uh, the greatest example I can give is Gluttony versus Scizor. And it was a very close set. Game one, um, it was very even stocks. Right. And then Gluttony was able to put Scizor on his last stock at zero, confirms into walk, and that was the game. Scizor didn't even have three stocks. Yeah. With Wario, sometimes it'd be like that. <laughs> it'd definitely be like that. So let's see if Kamehameha is going to be like that versus T here in the other set of Winner Semis. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's Mega Man, but, like, the M is just flipped, flipped over. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, of course, Wario here for uh, Kamehameha. I mean, I could maybe imagine the Hydrant would be very, very troublesome for Mega Man. He can't really, like, shoot the pellets past the Hydrant. So that's probably why he's opting with the Wario here. Um, just a character that can kind of get in. But honestly, I don't even really think that highly of this matchup. I I, I personally think that uh, Pac-Man beats Wario. Uh, it's just because, OK, so the Hydrant's set up, right? So Wario has to come in over the Hydrant. He has to. There's no, there's no like, mix-up for a ground approach. Um, I mean, there, there's, like, dash attack that might go through. But, like, T's going to, like, stand so far back from the Hydrant, right? So how does he really get in? Well, as you can see right now, is having a little bit of difficulty just coming over that wall that you had uh, just mentioned to us. Wario can eat the Hydrant. That's something I didn't know. Really? He can neutral be the Hydrant and just eat it. Like while it was standing? Yeah, just while it's standing or if it's falling. Like, Interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah. I saw it yesterday with um, in uh, T versus Gluto. Now, here's another thing that I'm kind of worried about. Like, Glutony is the best solo main Wario, right? No debate on that. Um, of course, there's a bunch of other players like uh, Kameme or like Tweak that play Wario and that are very, very good. So it's like just best Wario in general is like up for debate. But T3 owed Gutu. Oh. So yeah, it was like it was like the games were kind of close, but for the most part, T was in control the whole time. So. Well, maybe Kameme saw something that uh, Ow. T was not. Maybe he saw a weakness within that matchup that he saw uh, that he was having difficulty with. As you can see right now, he's able to just pick up that stock with a half walk. Yeah, I I was actually really interested. He got the bell stun, but he, he opted to use his waft over a, a smash attack. You have a lot of time when that bell stuns your opponent. Maybe he just doesn't want to have full waft. I, that that's like my only like. I think it was more about percent because. Uh, T was at like a mid higher percent. Uh, maybe he like 90s or 100. Like for the sure, kill. for sure, yeah. Let's make sure that T loses this stock. I don't want him to like barely reach the blast zone. He yeah. needs to go. I need I need that guaranteed stuff. Exactly. So the waft was used at about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. So keep keep an eye on that timer, guys, because it's a really big deal when you're just watching or fighting up against Wario or if you're playing as Wario because you always want to know when that minute has gone by. And that's when you know from... One minute to two minutes, that's when you have the half waft online. And half waft is actually comes out faster than the fully charged waft. So it's actually like better to confirm off of that just because it's quicker. Okay, well he's having a little bit of difficulty just kind of staying keeping his distance from from Kamehameha. 
Like, Kamehameha is just kind of getting these straight hits here and there, and they're racking up damage. Finally getting a grab into double board air. Okay, up smash onto the bike there. Um, bike could be a... Wow, just out of shield. <laughs> Raw. That, that was so good. And Kameme bringing this right back, and that's the second waft. Was used at about like five, five minutes, ten seconds. And just using it out of shield, that's such a great option. Using and like it I said, the shield, no setup needed. Yeah, and since the half waft comes out faster than the full waft, it's just that makes it the half waft even more a viable of an option out of shield. Okay, we're setting up the traps once again. The hydrant is down. Kamehameha playing very patient, waiting for it to disappear before he starts his approach. Yeah, at, at this point, Kamehameha doesn't really have to come in because the more time that goes by, uh, the more, like, more waft is charged, right? So now that the waft is, like, almost charged up here for half waft, we see Kamehameha starting to come in, trying to get some kind of half waft set up, trying to get this stock as early as possible because that's the name of the game here when you're playing with Wario. Sure, let's see how far you... What, what type of highway robbery can you pull out? Oh, man, I... Pretty sure that was a walk. I, I I can't imagine why you would pull out the bike in that situation. Oh man! But there it is. The bell connects, and that's so hard to avoid because the the way the bell just flies out of Pac-Man's hand, it just covers so much um, area in the air because it arcs right up, comes back down. And Wario, like I said in the beginning, especially when the hydrant's down, the only way you can come in is through the air. So it's like the the combination of like how the bells arc combined with how Hydrant like sets up neutral. I just, it's so, it, I just feel like it's so hard. It's the perfect trap to beat out Wario. And that's why we can see T really utilizing it and abusing it. Wait, he's sticking Kamehameha, with it. Kamehameha is, uh, he's confident. He's committed. He's going to stick right. it out with his Wario. And let's see what's going to happen in game two. I mean, I'm, we're probably not going to see it, but I would love to see the sheep. Uh, definitely. Uh, I was actually thinking the same thing. Yeah, but, but I mean, I'm pretty sure Needles doesn't go through Hydrant, so yeah. it's probably a horrible matchup. But I just, I just want to see the Sheik. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sheik's just fun to watch. Okay, well, down it does connect, and now we find Kamehameha off stage, but riding that bike all the way back. Hey, both, both these uh, players want to utilize the bike, but T going to go ahead and forward smash that bike right out of existence here. Kamehameha finding his opening, but doesn't get too much off of that falling forward air. Looking for that high recovery from T, going up the up throw, and gets a little bit, a little punish from uh, from T for it. Yeah, both these characters with very quick fair out of shields, so definitely something to look out for. Um, and they also both have very quick nair out of shields. Oh, we're trying to get that hydrant drop. But gonna go high here, hits him right out. That's right, again. Forward air and just keep, keeping Kamehameha at, off stage and at the ledge. Yeah, big damage coming in. Look at Kamehameha already at 125%. And that, that grab definitely got upgraded from Smash 4. That grab was uh, horrendously horrible in Smash 4. Oh, good parry. Going for the double grab, but no Kamehameha to, uh, in range. Half waft is online here for Kamehameha if he gets some kind of setup into it. But, oh man, there it is. The, uh, the good old bell coming through and right into the Smash second. Time and time again, we've seen T throughout this entire tournament. How does he get all his thoughts? Well, most of them really just come off of those bell setups and those bell confirms. That's right. I don't know what the price is on that bell, but uh, T has definitely stocked up on him. He has those setups on lockdown. Yeah, yes. invest, 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 man. These uh, these bells are just putting in so much work. Here's the stall. Okay. Oh, good grab. They were both sitting in shield for quite a bit. Really one of those uh, standoff situations. Oh, man, and T just has all these mad reads. That's another thing that uh, Pac-Man, just the raw, oh my goodness, wow, T just turned it up. He didn't even set up, he, there was no patience there, there was just, just, I got the hardest read on you, you're gonna push a button, take this belt. Yeah, it was just like such great setups and such great combo game coming out from T. It all started with the grab onto the platform. Uh, both these characters now have grab combos, they can go up throw into the up air now, and it's just, it. Lo those little things, man, they matter so, so much, and is. My man T about to three stock Kamehameha because the full waft is online right now. And of course, Kamehameha is probably not going to use it. He wants to take this stock without using the waft and try to try to set up the waft setup for the second stock. That's right. You're just saying that's so connected. It's not going to be enough. Oh, oh, dude. He almost comboed the apple into the forward air. That would have been so tight. Okay. The okay. Mario Brothers up smash. Yeah. Hit him there with the noggin. There was one move that, uh, that's going to be consistent. It's going to be the up smash. Yeah. And right there, ooh, right there, eating the Galaga. Really good stuff. So you trying to catch him off the bike, but Kamehameha riding it all the way onto the stage here. Trying to get some kind of damage going with these Nairs, but not going to connect. And look how evasive T is playing right now. He wants to make sure that 
the setup that Kamehameha is going to be going for doesn't affect Star because he knows what the result is going to be. Even rolling back to the Dude, do it again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Those that is what I need setups are crazy. And I want to point out, at these low percents, we see Kamehameha going for the rising there. That move sucks at, like, sub 10, sub 20%. It doesn't even combo into the second hit. And you saw um, it was actually negative on block because he hit him with rising there, and T was able to nair him before the second hit of nair connected on the T. It's very unfortunate when that happens, but we say up to him into an up air. No, no walk to, to follow up. Yeah, I'm very surprised he didn't frame trap with the uh, another up tilt. He probably could have got up tilt walk there, but he was center stage, so maybe it wouldn't have killed. The forward smash anti-airing. That anti-aired Kameme. Another great tool for Pac-Man to seal out the stocks. Where do you go as Wario? I, I just, I can't see it, man. I just, I can't see it. Kamehameha well, must still have some type of idea what he's going to do. He's thinking long and hard. Flip the W around, man. Think Flip it, it back over. Think that's where we need more M's, less W's? <laughs> Flip the W back to the M, bro. Well, he ain't about it. Like I said, my man Kamehameha, he's committed. He's committed to his Wario. Yeah, I mean, his Wario... Uh, probably is. I'm pretty sure it's gonna. It's his second best character. So at this point, the matchup is probably just so bad as Mega Man. <laughs> like it's no point in trying. And then it's just like, well, this is also bad for my second best character. But like it's just better than Mega Man. But it also comes down to like a comfort pick. If, if Mega Man is in fact like a more comfortable pick, even if the matchup's like bad or worse. Dude, it, it, it must be like be super choice, bad. But yes, if it is in fact as bad as, as uh, we assume it is, then. Hoping that the, the Wario is able to get a couple games off T. Yeah, because, I mean, these guys have competed against each other in Japan, and so you already know. I mean, he's, he's pro they've probably played in bracket before, and this is probably just like, when I go against T, I play this character. Even yeah. though it, it's it's rough, I still do it. <laughs> I hope I don't fight T in bracket. <laughs> like one of those it, situations. It'd be like that sometimes, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, but Kameme actually here with the lead. Oh, but T, we got, we got the backboard tricks, though. Of course he has the backboard tricks, especially with the, the Galaga. Okay, the bell is online. We're not going to see another water, but the bell is going to launch the hydrant as well. Oh, really good neutral beat on the platform. Um, everyone's first instinctive option when they're on a platform and someone jumps at them, you want a shield. But, wow, Kameme going to take the first stock here. We have another half wop coming in clutch for Kameme. But this bell, oh, can eat it up. I think we found the answer to the bell. You just just got to keep getting fatter. Just yep, keep put it in the mouth. Eat, <laughs> eat more. <laughs> Wow, look at that. T, I love how T just utilizes all the little tricks with the Hydrant. He'll let the Hydrant push himself back. Oh, can you get it? Oh, oh man. Just a little bit too high, not able to reach all the way to the sky. Pac-Man don't got the hops, not like that. And eating that bell once again. They may making great use of that neutral B. Yeah, he's doing a really good job avoiding the down air edge guard here. Tech chase situation. Oh, Kamehameha does not capitalize on that uh, roll in. Okay, jumping to the platform, it's still resetting on this platform. That platform is going to be uh, Kamehameha's friend because it's going to essentially just get rid of the, the get rid of the hydrant. Yeah, the parry into reposition there from T. And you see, even right when he hit when he's behind the hydrant by the edge, he'll jump and charge so the water goes underneath him so he doesn't like get blown off the stage here. Right now, T's got the bike, he's got the hydrant, but both of them missed their mark. Hey, we need another command grab on these platforms. It's gonna like it's gonna heal <laughs> Kamehameha just a little bit, but oh, what was oh, that key setup? He he wanted to throw the key and the water push it back. Uh, so okay. an yet another backboard trick, but with the hydrant this time. Yeah, very very tricky. I'm sure that would have put the key at an angle too. Yes, yes, it would have. All right, Ooh, right into the grab. You usually don't expect that pack grab. Okay, but now T has even the stocks. But man, I gotta say Kamehameha lived to absurdly high percents that uh, that first stock. Man, he was in like 180. Right, Kamehameha's Bozeman sitting in shield, going for a half waft. Just, All right. He's out of shield half waft. Yes, out of shield half waft just seems like the go-to here for Kamehameha. That is the play. We have the playbook in front of us now from Kamehameha. It's eat, eat the bell and go for half waft. Yeah, yeah. and it, I mean, it's been working out for him so much. And the thing about both these characters, when you're like in a shield off position where like both characters are next to each other shielding, both these characters have such great like quick nares out of shield that like someone wants to do it first. You know what I mean? And Kamehameha, I feel like, is trying to get T to be the first one to pull the trigger so he can out of shield waft it. Just comes down to how comfortable you are holding the R button. Okay, nearing that bell. And now the bell. Ooh, he's on. Okay, he's getting so many items thrown at Kamehameha. I know, right? <laughs> Jeez. Calm down, T. He's even throwing his own bike at him. Literally throwing everything that's on the board. She always oh, going to get it. Oh, okay. Oh. 
tried to get the roll in just to avoid that bell pressure, but Kameme knows to stay there in shield. You won't die from the pack grab. Okay, getting another command grab on these platforms. Again, making great use. Just continuing to keep uh, T at the left side of the stage. But that's kind of like T's game plan. He's very comfortable just taking his time getting back to the stage and charging up for this bell. Okay, there's the, uh, he eats up that hydrant there. But T has the bell and he stands there menacing. <laughs> We've seen a lot of that today. <laughs> <laughs> Patient play coming out here in this top eight. And you know what? When you see that, I appreciate it just because you know these players really, really want to win. Okay, so one thing that I, today that I learned uh, is that if you have Wario's bike and you throw it straight up, it has more knockback than if you would just throw it right at him. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's why War Wario's, like, you can set up into, like, up throw, like, throw the bike up and then, like, grab him and throw him into the bike coming down. I know just, like, kill absurdly early. Oh, getting the key, but now it's in Kameme's hands. Now, Kameme very used to using these, these projectiles. Looking very comfortable with it. Kameme's still alive. He's got, like, super rage on deck here. So Kameme gets any kind of, oh, oh wow, tries there. to go for the read. Expecting the jump from the ledge, but team not there. Okay, T going extremely high with the double jump and the side B here. Going to lay down the Hydrant and land right back in. But wow, what a read coming out from Kamehameha. He read that ages ago. You dead? Wow, right into the apple. What? Ooh, that was crazy. I didn't know you knew that much about fruits. Well, Mario's just laughing at him. That's <laughs> actually the worst, like losing to Wario. Not because, like... You feel like you got robbed, oh, but the fact yeah. that he just laughs at you after. Yeah, imagine like getting wafted at 40 and then someone just like ah. IRL just laughing at you like that. <laughs> Dude. Rolling on the ground, pointing at you. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, man. But yeah, what a setup coming out from Kameme. He threw the apple to cover normal get up and jump, right? And then he goes to the roll area to cover it with the neutral B. But the neutral B is like either just going to kill you outright or just go puts you right into the apple there. What a great ledge trap, and man, it just really goes to show that Kameme is very um, knowledgeable in this matchup. Yeah, knowledgeable and comfortable, and we're starting to see why Wario uh, uh, is the pick for, for his, uh, his choice of character. I mean, you know what? Kameme did something with Wario that uh, Gluttony didn't, and that was take a game off of T's Pac-Man. Wow, maybe we need to rethink this, uh, this Wario matchup. <laughs> I'm just saying, like like I said, every time I mention uh, Gluttony, I will always say it, the best solo main warrior. Yeah. Because there's so many great Warriors out there. There's it's, no it's, doubt in that. It's really hard to tell. Like I mean, Kameme is one of the few people that has a set on Leo. You know what I mean? I mean, he didn't do it with Wario, but like still. <laughs> Imagine though. He's a great player. <laughs> okay, up throw into a single up air. He is swinging. I like these falling up airs. I don't know if they uh, oh. if they're actually good, but it just looks cool. <laughs> These little flips from, from Pac-Man. Yeah, man. Pac-Man got the flips. Another thing I love about Pac-Man, I mean, it's not, like, actually related to the gameplay, but just his face is so animated. Just look, look at Pac-Man's face while he's doing everything. He's just so happy, then he's surprised. Like, he's just he's such an animated character. I don't think Pac-Man was expecting to be in Smash Bros. He's just happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's happy to be in Winner's Finals. He's in Smash, and he's not 2D, man. Yo, not 2D? Not 2D. Not, not everybody got that treatment. So. Yeah, not <laughs> yeah. Game and Watch. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> oh, the hydrant connects onto Kameme. He's recovering high, trying to make put some oh. room between him and that bell. But a good read from T as he lands that F smash. Yeah, that roll read coming out from T, and what a great play using the bell to pressure behind him. But Kameme with the waft, man, and. Uh, you know, T, T, T is just like Pac-Man. He's so animated when he plays. I, like, from the corner of my eye, right when he got wafty, like, he, like, cocked back on his chair. Like, dude, I swear, it's so funny. Yeah, we need to have player cams whenever T's on the stream. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really good. All right, so 0% a pop here. And, man, Kamehameha keeping a lot of these games a lot closer uh, than the first two, for sure. I mean, he won the third one. Yeah. It's really, in, in part two, making use of that command grab. Yes. And just making use of these platforms. Yeah, and I, I, just the way he's using WAP is so much different than everyone else that would play this matchup. Like, I feel like Gluttony was trying to fish really hard for, like, up tilt setups and stuff, but uh, it looks like Kameme is, like, not even going for that because... Oh, well, up tilt? Okay. I was like, wait a minute. I might have to retract that statement. <laughs> but... uh. Like, Hold on, boys. We might get one. <laughs> but uh, Kameme just mainly using the walk for either hard reads or just like out of an out of shield option. Just like, oh, Pac-Man, you you're doing a rising throw on my shield. Sweet, you're dead. 
course, Kamehameha making great use of, the, of that neutral B, using it at the ledge to cover multiple options. Now kicking Kamehameha right back off stage, putting him in the same situation, but retreating to the platform very smart. Yeah, just gonna nullify some of this pressure. T going very high, dropping. He just wanted to set up the hydrant, right? The, the hydrant so, so important. He even side B's up into the sky just to set it up. <laughs> I do like how players uh, try to make use of the, the bubble to try and hide certain animations. Maybe they can oh, try yeah, and catch yeah. their opponent off guard. Right, right, yeah. And I mean, even just like the animation of him throwing it down. But the back air does connect and it will kill. Kameme up an entire stock with Wario. Kameme is a high caliber player and we're seeing exactly why the adjustments may have been a little bit slower than most of us would have liked. But at the same time, they are, have been made. Yeah, wow, Kameme really showing that maybe, maybe this matchup's not as bad as I thought it was, but I, 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 he's he's able to secure the lead, and now he's doing such a good job of dealing with everything that was such a hindrance to him in the beginning, right? He's, he's starting to neutral the bells, even like neutral the fire hydrants as well, but mainly the bells. That's what's getting him killed a lot, right, is these bells. So he, he's dealing, oh, wait, there's the WAF. And I, you know what? It's not, not going to kill, but it gets a lot of damage. That's right. You know, at this point, we'll take that for sure. But like you were saying, you know, he did, in fact, make a huge adjustment. And when it comes to that bell, I'm pretty sure that's Kamehameha's favorite snack right now. And that's another thing that can be very inconsistent about the uh, up to home, man, trying to get tricky again with the bell and the water. But that's another thing that can be a little inconsistent with some of the Waffling firms, especially by the edge, is you get up tilted, and really good players are not going to DI. Like, if you get up tilted on the right side of the stage, they're not going to DI right. They're going to DI left. Because if you do jump Waft out of that up tilt, they're going to get sent cross stage instead of, you know, closer to the, like, they're just going to get sent to the other blast zone. So that's where I feel like some of these up tilt confirms aren't as reliable, and that's my, maybe we're seeing Kameme go for more of these, save more of these wasps for out of shield options instead. I mean, Kameme has amazing reactions, as you can see, as he continues to use half waft out of shield, but Anair does connect. Oh, okay, I actually, I actually thought that was another half waft right there. Yeah. I heard that parry sound, like, ooh, hold my breath. And I've seen Kameme get so many things out of parry, like he gets like parry into Mega Man up tilt. Would not be surprised if we see a parry waft. Okay. Taking his time, making it back to stage. I believe the bell is in the rotation. The bell is out on the stage. Yeah, but I mean, can you even hit Kamehameha with it at this point, man? It's, he's doing such a good job of not getting hit by the bell, not getting hit by any of these smash attacks anymore. And wow, Wario jab, something you don't see every day. Yeah, mixing up the landing, making T actually throw the bell in the opposite direction, getting forward air to cross stage. But Wario gonna be able to lift that B reversal, trying to catch the neutral get up from T, but he's just hanging out. Yeah, T just waiting out this uh, as much time on the ledge, but there's a dash attack on that whiff grab, and Kamehameha made it very clear. I will not commit into you. You have to take a risk. You have to take a risk to get this stock. And when you mess up, when you don't guess right, I will be there to take yours. <laughs> Kamehameha is the, the veteran player between the two of them. And yes. Usually age uh, doesn't really play a part, but you can see the experience that Kamehameha has when it comes to just playing that patient role. Yeah, and like I said, just incredible adjustments coming out from Kameme. Just eating the bell, like just not getting hit by all the setups that were working game one and two. And just the adaptation is coming in strong. We'll see if uh, T can stop this reverse 3-0. I mean, T was the one who reversed 3-0 in winners yesterday. Right now he's in the he's on the other side of the coin right now. He's he now possible reverse 3-0 on him coming from his fellow Japanese player Kameme. I'm sure all the Warriors are just giving Kameme their energy. They're just throwing up a big spirit bomb for him because they want to see the reverse 3 0 and have a Wario advance to win his finals. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Wario mains that are trying to give your energy to him, but he'll, he'll probably go Mega Man and win his finals. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> they the, helped, though. The thought they counts. They contributed. <laughs> <laughs> the thought, you know, sometimes the thought that counts, man. <laughs> okay, well, we're having a great start for T. We got a lot of aerials and even the hydrant connecting onto Kameme. Oh wow, okay, Kameme, or T not gonna catch that landing after the air dodge. It looked like he had a frame trap situation, but just backs off there. All, but already 70% out the gate here for T. Definitely a way you wanna be starting this game number five if you're T. Game five, of course, is so important. Both okay. players is, I mean, they're playing this neutral so well, so patient. They're both throwing out single aerials. To see if they're able to convert. If it connects, they're gonna go in. Just these cross ups. It, and I, I just feel like if you're T, you also don't want to get too aggressive with your aerials because that, that waft out of shield, I mean, he's not going to die for it now, but I mean, he has been killed for being aggressive onto the um, onto the shield of Kameme. 
But I think it's also about sending that message that Kamehameha was sending in game four. That T, in fact, does not have to approach right now. He does have a percent. These stocks are even, but yep. he's technically winning. Yeah, and right here, I, I mean, I feel like it's actually beneficial for T to keep on camping because I'd rather deal with ha full waft than half waft, honestly. And an another 30 seconds, that's going to be full waft, mm -hmm. which is just slower. That's right, and at 45%, you're next to the ledge. That's not a place you want to be with, with a player who's been landing half waft out of shield so many times. Okay, another nair lands on to uh, onto T. Yeah, and look at look at this, man. It Kameme really wants this up to waft. But now we have full waft on deck. Yep, every time you do eat something, you take a second off the waft timer. So usually you'd see the full waft at six minutes, which we just got to. But since he has been eating items, but there it is. And T just staying patient, not letting Kamehameha find a way in, and just waiting out the half waft, honestly. Just not really trying to pick fights when Kamehameha has the, the half waft. And now it's going to be Kamehameha playing T's game. We're going to be at the momentum that T sets. And if Kamehameha is not able to break this wall that he has so much difficulty breaking in games one and two, then we're going to see a very similar uh, outcome. Yeah, I mean, and, and at, this, at this point, this is where the matchup just really shows how rough it is for Wario to get in. Because especially that last game, Kamehameha had the lead. So T was the one who had to take risk. But now, this is, this is how, what Wario looks like when he has to take risk. In the Pac-Man, through the Hydrant. Like, it's rough. It's hard. Yeah, these traps are just getting... Uh, more convoluted as they, as uh, you allow T to set up because he'll throw down the hydrant, he'll start charging fruit, he'll put a trampoline down. How do you deal with all that? It, it's rough. I mean, it, it's still doable, but it's it's just really really hard for Wario just because if you make him come in through the air at a certain angle, it's just you already know what he's gonna do. Like he has a double jump mix up, or he can fall down onto you with fair and air, and like fair and air don't have a crazy range. Okay, but the Nair does land. We see a forward air into a back air. Kamehameha able to even up the stocks without taking really any percent. Yeah, honestly doing a really good job of not taking any damage there. Shoutouts to a uh, rising Nair at 0% being bad. <laughs> Definitely uh, was negative on hit there. <laughs> okay, but the Apple does connect and now with full walk on online. Kamehameha can try and go for some type of conversion. Okay, there's the up tilt. Yeah, it looks like he is going to go try and rob a stock. Yeah, Kamehameha definitely wanted that juicy, juicy falling up air. I've seen uh, many <laughs> I've seen many games just taken <laughs> with that falling up air and many, many sad players because of it. Okay, well, he's trying to avoid that exact situation. Falling up air does whiff. He's just taking his time making it back to the stage. Command grab also whiffing. T is making Kamehameha run laps around yes. Pokemon Stadium too. Yes, uh, T is definitely making him work for it. Wow, that up B gets him, but like honestly doesn't even really put him in a, puts him actually in a bad position because Kamehameha was able to get the hit, puts him in disadvantage, and now he's got him in the corner and Kamehameha doesn't have all the things he, he doesn't have all the things he has wants set up in the spots he wants him to be. Okay, oh, power there shield is. waft doesn't work. Did you see T buffer the air dodge after the fair and then he drifted back right after the fair, almost like he wanted to bait that out. I mean, that is the exact situation that he's been punished uh, multiple times earlier in the set. Now using that exact scenario in his advantage. Yeah, and that is a very big deal. The, the WAPT is now entirely offline here. So T does not have to worry about too much things. He, and honestly, because when the WAPT is online, you everyone's going to play different. Of course, there's a, there's a tool that's available for <laughs> your opponent that can kill you at 50. A very strong tool indeed. An air out of shield is going to be the, the tool that Kamehameha is really trying to abuse right now. Okay, Kamehameha has the ledge trap here. We've seen how strong Kamehameha's ledge trapping can be, and that's honestly what has helped him throughout this whole entire bracket, especially in this matchup here. He's able to corner his opponent, land the back airs, and that's one of the big, big things for Wario. So one adjustment I've seen from T is that he's starting to put out the Hydrant and then use the bell to break the Hydrant. What? He parried the first hit of Dash Attack and before the second hit of Dash Attack came out, he was able to get the down tilt out. Is this Nutribi going to kill? No, barely surviving here for T. Going high with the side B though. Okay, but Kamehameha I'm sure is very comfortable. He's going all the way up there. T was expecting that. Throwing out the down air, that multi-hit. Going to make sure that T makes it back safe, very safely. Parrying yeah. the bike. The half walk is online here for Kamehameha. I doubt he's going to use it for this stock. So we'll probably end up seeing a full walk coming in for this last stock here. But T is just still playing the very patient game. I mean, technically he has the lead, but not anymore. Falling right through the back air and hitting, or falling right through the platform and hitting with the back air. Yeah, that hard helmet does so much. And the forward air is going to connect for T. He's wow. going to have to now 
the, the roles have been reversed. He has to chase Kameme around. And Kameme, uh, as we saw earlier, is very comfortable with just standing there. Yeah, he, oh, oh, but on that platform tech chase, where do you go? He covered like three out of four options there. The like, full walk is on. Yes. It cool. is active. Yep. So we'll see if Kameme can get a setup here. He has that low rage. Okay. Oh, wow, Nair, fully connecting there. Yeah, at this site. point, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if we see Kameme just utilize the walk just for damage. Because Korean, I don't know if you've looked at the time, but uh, yes. we're approaching the 60 second mark. It, it appears that both of our players are playing very hard. They <laughs> very, they like really, like there's people that really want to win, and these guys like really, really want to win. They are going for the long con. And you know, this setup that I, you know, I was trying to talk about a little bit earlier, but we see T in these setups covering uh, himself with the hydrant and breaking the hydrant with the bell. It's actually preventing Kamehame from eating the bell. So it's keeping it in play. Dude, okay, so this is crazy. This is the last walk. Oh! This is the last walk. Wait. Excuse me for he has to. He yes, has he to. has to. He has to. He has to. And now he's not going to get another walk that's going to kill. And so not even half walk is going to be able to make it out in time. Yeah, exactly. That, that was the last walk, and he had to use it for the recovery. What a great situation for T, forcing him off that bike. But he did just get forward aired off the stage, and now F tilting 99% on the T. So 25 second mark. Oh, we are approaching in the. Just this deficit is continuing to grow for T. Back air lands, and that's going to be it for Kameme. And the pop-off coming through. Man, T is hurting, man. There was less than 30 seconds on the clock there. It was so, so close, but Kameme able to clutch it out and using the waft for something we usually don't see it for. Going to use it to recover, get back on stage, and ledge trap after ledge trap after ledge trap. Got a 